Hey everybody, it's Lo, and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some keto coconut clusters. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. So if you watch my Instagram stories, then you'll know the other week that Austin had these keto coconut clusters that he was putting on some yogurt with some blueberries and some almond butter, and it's a delicious, sweet treat, and he ran out, and that brand of coconut clusters is only available at Costco, and it's no longer at the Costco near him. They're not stocking it any longer. There's some at a Costco that's like further away, or you can get them on eBay, and he was like, that's weird. So I said, let me take a photo of what's on the back, what's in the ingredients, Ingredients, and I'm gonna try to recreate it. So that actually on the back of the ingredients had some like sugars and like rice sugar to where it's keto when you follow the portions, but if you went any more, if you had a little bit extra, all those sugars make it a little less keto. So I thought I can make an actual real keto version with no added sugars and none of that gunk that's better, healthier, and you don't have to get it on eBay. I tested it out the other week, which I also posted on my stories, and it came out so good. And I took it over to his place, we put it on the yogurt, and it was probably one of the best ones that we've ever had. And again, all natural, it's gluten-free, it's vegan, it's keto, and it's so delicious and so easy to make, so I'm super excited to show you guys right now. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up my toaster oven to 350 degrees. You can do this in your regular size oven, but it's not a ton that this makes, so my toaster oven pan is a little on the small side. It's this big so I made enough when I made this the other week to where it filled and it was a little thick so if you do use a regular size baking sheet then you can flatten it out a lot more and they'd be a lot thinner pieces but these pieces were honestly delicious and it's so much easier to just heat up the toaster oven and it doesn't get the apartment all hot so if you have a toaster oven this is so much easier to do, but if you don't, then your regular oven works as well. Just be sure to preheat it to 350 degrees. So I'm gonna do that right now. I take it back, I'm not gonna do that until the very end because to turn it on, it's a timer, so all you hear is clicking, but I'll just do that at the end and edit it all together. But if you're not filming a video, turn it on right now. Now for the actual coconut clusters. So you're gonna need some coconut. So I got these coconut flakes from Bob's Red Mill. The flakes are perfect because they're a bit bigger. I do have desiccated coconut, but I looked at it and it's so fine and powdery. And the desiccated coconut wouldn't be the same as a cluster. So if you're making like a trail mix and you're roasting some nuts, then that would be nice to mix in there. But to make it a cluster and really make it stick together, the coconut flakes are what you want to use. So I thought these are perfect. I'm going to do about a little under two cups, any more than that, and my little pan will be overflowing. But just a little under two cups, about a cup and a half. And for the coconut flakes, a serving is a quarter cup, so I have about seven servings in my bowl probably, but for each serving, there's four grams of carbs and three grams of fiber. So each serving is only one net carb, and that's if you, so it would have seven net carbs just from this coconut flakes, but that's if you ate the entire batch of these clusters, which, you're not doing you could because they're so good but I recommend you know saving some for other days you want treats so already super low carb and it has nine grams of fat because again it's coconut so coconut is really good in healthy fats the next thing I'm going to add in there is some flax the flax is a really good binder so this is ground flax seed so it kind of really helps it bind together and also has a lot of fiber which is really good and is also a really good healthy fat. So just gonna do a little over a tablespoon of the flax. I'm also going to add in a little over a tablespoon of some chia seed, which once you add in the coconut and you, the coconut oil and you start mixing it all together, the chia seeds will expand a little bit, which again, just really helps it all bind together and also provides a lot of fiber. For some more healthy fats, I'm gonna add some seeds. So I'm gonna do some sunflower seeds just because that was on the list of ingredients of the coconut clusters that he had my favorite seed is pumpkin seeds or pepitas they're sometimes labeled as so i have some raw pumpkin seeds and all this is raw as well the sunflower seeds were raw so i'm going to do a little over a tablespoon of that almost two tablespoons because i do like pumpkin seeds more i'm also going to add in some almonds so his had some almonds in there 
about a quarter cup, as well as a quarter cup of some pecans. And for the almonds, if you have slivered almonds, then that might be better just because then you can get like a little bit of almond in every bite. But I just have whole almonds, but for the pecans, I'm just crushing them up a little bit so they're kind of like in halves. And that just allows a little bit of pecan in every bite. I'll leave some whole though. So in the bowl, you have your coconut flakes, which will be the base. It's what most of it will be made out of. I have made a granola on this channel before. I'll leave that link down below. But that granola, the base, and basically the whole of it was oatmeal, some oats. And I also added maple syrup to that. So the oats and the maple syrup makes it not a keto treat. But if you're not doing keto and you have gluten-free oats, I think that granola is really, really good. But this is a delicious keto alternative. So I'm gonna take a fork just because it's a little bit easier to do so with a fork and mix the coconut flakes, the chia seeds, the ground flax, the nuts, and the seeds all together. So they're all nice and even in there. And also, I'm going to add in a little bit of salt. I'm gonna use my pink Himalayan salt. And then as a binder, because it can't really stick together if there's nothing to hold it together. So if you're doing like a trail mix, then you just need like a little bit of oil so the nuts and seeds can roast. But for the granola, I again use maple syrup with some of the coconut oil. And for this, I'm just gonna use coconut oil. So I'm gonna do about three tablespoons of that. Coconut oil gets a little messy. But again, the coconut oil will give you really good fats. Coconut oil is also really high in MCTs. So if you're doing keto, you know about MCT oil and adding it to your coffee. MCT oil is just a really refined, like distilled coconut oil because coconut oil does have all those MCTs in there. So without spending like 30 bucks on a bottle of MCT oil, just gonna use some coconut oil. It's also easier to mix together when the coconut oil is a liquid, so I'm gonna throw it in there for 30 seconds just to make it a liquid and can easily blend it up with all my dry ingredients. And I'm just going to pour the melted coconut oil into this mixture, making sure to kind of start mixing it all together. That way it all gets the coconut oil all over it. mixing these all together as best as you can. And as you can see, the chia seeds are already getting a little gelatinous, which helps with that binding. Now the coconut flakes are sweet, but that's the only sweet thing really in here. And I love sugary sweet things. I have a huge sweet tooth. So to sweeten it up a little bit more and give it a bit more flavor, I'm gonna add two more things before I bake it. So like I said, for when I made the granola, I used maple syrup as part of the binder for it. So to add that little bit of flavor, I have some maple extract. You can also use vanilla extract, but I think maple is just a really nice touch. And then the last thing that I'm going to add is the stevia leaf and monk fruit natural sweetener blend. And you could add regular sugar, but again, not as keto friendly. And you could add a coconut sugar, which is, it still has added carbs to it, but it is a better like natural substitute and will make it like a really nice natural sweetness. But I'm just gonna go in with this. And what is annoying about this packet, Austin and I got it very close to the start of quarantine when everybody wanted to make bread, make banana bread, and everything was out of the store. And we wanted to make something. He wanted to make something for my birthday. And we wanted to get some of this stevia. So we couldn't find any like regular stevia or anything. And everything was just wiped out of the stores to where you can tell that people obviously wanted to go for sugar, but the sugar was out, so then like they started going for all the substitutes to where even the things that people would not reach for were gone. But we did manage to find this box. The sad part though is that they're individually packaged, but it's all that was available back in March, and just, just gotta use it, just gotta do what I can. So I'm gonna add a couple of these. I'm actually gonna add three. So once you have everything pretty well mixed and well distributed in your bowl, then you are going to get your little baking pan and just lay it out there nice and flat. So again, I'm just using this little one for my toaster oven and I do love my silicone baking sheets, but they're for a regular size baking pan. So gotta go in with my little piece of parchment paper here and then 
Just dump it all on there. Flatten it out as best as you can. Take up the whole thing. I have noticed that the chia seeds love to stay behind. And by this point, your toaster oven or your big oven should be preheated to 350 degrees already. Mine isn't, again, because it's loud, but I'm gonna do that right now. And once it's preheated, I'm gonna throw these in there for eight to 12 minutes. It really varies depending on your oven. So, and also the thickness of this. So this might take a little bit closer to 12 just because it is about the thickness of this pan, um, a little bit less. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be closer to 12 for mine personally. But if you flatten yours out even more, or if you know that your oven cooks a little fast, then it'd probably be, it'll probably be closer to eight minutes. Just kind of look at the coconut. And once the coconut starts getting golden and just like a little toasty on top, leave it in there for a minute longer. Make sure it doesn't burn though. Like once it's at that point, pay, pay close attention. And then you'll take it out. So again, anywhere between eight to 12 minutes, super quick at 350 degrees. So it's almost done in the toaster oven. They're starting to get a little gold on top, which is perfect. And the only reason I like to keep it in there a little bit longer once the coconut on top is already getting gold is again because it is laid on there a little bit thick and I wanna make sure that it cooks all the way through. So again, if you do have it really flat on your baking sheet, then once it's gold, you can take it out right away. But that like extra minute that I like to leave it in there is mostly because I wanna make sure that it bakes all the way through and it's all equally delicious. Although it's delicious even when it's not baked. There it is. So here we go. That's like that gold that I was talking about. Ooh, it smells so good. Mmm. Now what you're gonna do before you jump straight into it, mostly because it's hot and last time I made this, I did take a few bites right when it came out because it just smelled so good and it tasted so good, but it was very, very hot but you want it to set. That way you can break it up later. So right now, because the coconut oil is hot, then everything's just kind of like loose still. So you're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about like 15 minutes. If you don't have patience like me, like 10 minutes, but just let it sit in the refrigerator so it gets nice and hard and then you can break it up. So into the refrigerator it goes. And now you must wait. I just talked to the camera for the entire last bit of this video and realized it was not recording for like the entire last half. So, you know, that's life. Anyway, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know why I did a little outfit change. The granola took longer than 15 minutes to harden in the refrigerator, so I figured I'll let it harden even longer and just do some yoga in between then. So, just did like 25 minutes of yoga while the granola was hardening took it out of the refrigerator, back on camera. I said, look it, it looks delicious, it's hard. It looks so good. And then I said, I'm gonna put it in a mason jar and I put it in this bigger size one. This is almost all of it that I made and I'm gonna take it to Austin's cause he has the yogurt and the almond butter and the blueberries that make that delicious snack. And I was also saying how last time I put it in a tiny mason jar and I sent him a photo when it was on my pan and he thought, wow, and there was only enough for a tiny mason jar? No. I filled up the tiny mason jar and then I was gonna fill up a second mason jar to leave at my place, but then I took a bite and then all of a sudden I ate it all. And there was none to stay here because I ate most of it, all of it. So now I'm taking him the bigger one. That way it lasts us longer. And also, once you do break it up, crumble it up, put it in your mason jar, your Pyrex, whatever you have, leave it in the refrigerator because since it is coconut oil kind of holding it together and at least where i am it's pretty hot if i leave it on the counter it'll just be mush and like won't be good after a bit so just leave it in the refrigerator it tastes so good nice and cold with everything and also it just preserves it longer i don't know how long it'll last because we ate it pretty quickly but i'm sure it'll last like at least over a week but again you'll eat it pretty quickly it'll be gone before then and then i was saying how good it was and then those last bits for me and then at that point, I realized the camera was off. But there's my brief summary of everything that I talked about. And here it is. And it's so delicious. It's so keto. It's gluten-free. It's vegan. It's dairy-free. It's soy-free. It's all the freeze that you want it to be. And it's added sugar-free, too. Mmm. 
you'll love it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite keto snack is and what you want to see more of on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.